read the label a little better this time. Sorry, Ken. I no, it's all right. It's all learning, all learning. Over here, right. Well, I find this a rather inexpressive coffee compared with the previous one. Yeah. Yeah, not as yeah, It's a powerful. coffee coffee. It's one of those coffees where people, uh, if you're teaching a coffee class and say, what, wh what are you getting in the nose? They'll say, well, it smells like coffee. So I guess my first, without conviction, really, I'd say it's a, probably a washed coffee. Would that be a, a typical trait of a washed coffee? Is it have a more generic aroma? Yeah. Of just coffee? Okay. Yes. Because for decades, the normal, good quality, premium coffee that we drink from Central America or from Colombia, for example, or from the African countries, are all washed coffees. All That's washed. the traditional. Yeah. The reason is because the, the commodity coffee industry wanted consistency. And when you dry the beans in the fruit, it's harder to control the consistency. Brazil, which does a lot of naturals, has gotten very good at it, but they've done it through technology, sorting afterwards. But it's unexpected things. I mean, the, the coffee world's gotten better and better at controlling how naturals are dried and how they taste. But still, the consistency that commodity coffee people who produce large-scale blends, they want to get coffee that tastes the same every from the same country and same exporter. So that's more likely to be a washed coffee because you're taking away, when you remove the, the skin and the fruit flesh, you're taking away a variable that's not very controllable. But again, it could be an old in the tooth natural, natural than sitting around too long before roasting. It's a no-nonsense, pleasant coffee doesn't have a lot of aromatic intrigue or excitement. Maybe a nice blackberry or something like that. A little hint of caramel or chocolate back there. Maybe a hint of flowers. I'm not even getting, I, yeah, I can't even tell you which flowers, but yes, yeah. getting a little floral. Yeah, a little bit of floral. Although not as strong in any sense as the first one. And sometimes with naturals, they're dried too long, or dried not too long, too quickly. And when the naturals are dried too quickly, they tend to get dull, often sort of nut-like. I don't get the nuts in here. So, but it could be a, a natural that was dried quickly because it has a heavy, if you taste it, it has a heavy uh, mouthfeel, much heavier than the number one. Yes, <laughs> yeah, although very, I, I like it. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was about to say. I think it's one of the, the positive features of this coffee. It has a very satisfying <laughs> full mouthfeel, and it's balanced. It doesn't balance a lot. There's not a lot to balance, but it's balanced. The other coffee, the number one, had a certain kind of uh, authority that was challenging, that might challenge a coffee drinker, whereas this sort of simple, satisfying, balanced. But again, in terms of the processing method, again, I'm, the body makes me, suggests uh, natural. The um, wow. lack of brightness, the sort of general... Uh, quietness of the cup uh, in terms of aromas suggests a washed, a simple washed coffee. <laughs> I'm afraid that in this case, I'm not trying to cover all my bases. I'm just saying that there's evidence. The body for natural, the aromatics for a simple washed. I'm ready to yeah find out what this is, Kevin. Well, I, uh, my comment would be, in general, this would be a coffee. If I had a friend drop by and I thought the, uh, my friend was uh, more resistant to trying something different, oops, <laughs> I, uh, I, I would say this would be a, a lower risk 
coffee for yeah, them. It's that's uh, well certainly said. a more yeah, it's a, yeah, you're absolutely right. It's more traditional. It's uh it just says coffee. It doesn't say Ethiopian coffee perhaps is strong. Yeah, I got a uh, more fruit in the other one I did uh, that even though it was uh, apparently a washed coffee but this one yeah here we go uh, oh can we get uh, is Ken gonna see this yeah this is uh, cafe grumpy Ethiopia Kachir is it what is the processing and, method uh, well I'm uh, that's what I've been looking for I was looking at the at the information that I had on it I was looking at their I went to their site after beforehand originally on Amazon heirloom selection but it doesn't it doesn't tell us let's see what what were well, the only notes I have are Yerga chef uh, Cochier malted milk apricot Earl Grey tea bag says hibiscus lemongrass and blackberry no, jam just, and just then go. wet wet well I was right then on this one it's so a wet process coffee and I suspect coffee is seasonal Mm -hmm. like uh, all agricultural products. And this is not a good time for Ethiopia. The old crop from the last harvest is being used up, and the new crop is about to come in. So uh, I decided to support this topic, though, because Ethiopia, it's a good time. You should, should be able to, Ethiopia should be able to handle it. The a variety of, uh, of um, profiles, and the careful preparation of the coffee should be able to keep, carry it through this sort of transition period. But it could be that this one just been around too long in the warehouses as a green coffee. Uh, that's a possibility too. But, but it has its virtues, definitely has its virtues. And as you put it, if you're entertaining, it would be a very good, satisfying, low risk choice yeah i love the taste after uh, i i didn't get as much aroma the other one had a lot more aroma and then right, I was, exactly. when i first tasted it i didn't like it as well so well we'll go back when they're cooled and see what we think 